Hello, hackers! Welcome back to another episode and the reverse engineering module. Today, we're going to be talking about data access, specifically how different uh, the access of different data in different regions looks like. Um, let me show you what I mean. As a reminder, data can be in a lot of different regions. Um, it can be in that data for pre-initialized global data and that RO data for global data that is read only in that BSS for uh, global data that does not have an initial state. So it doesn't need to actually be in the L file. It gets mapped into an empty chunk of memory. It can be in the stack. As we discussed in previous video, um, used for statically allocated local variables. It can be in the heap for dynamically allocated data using malloc and, and then freed using free and so forth. Um, this one we'll explore in um, later in the course. Uh, we won't talk about the heap much or you won't have to interact with the heap much um, because it has its own security issues that we'll go in depth into. But let's look at how data in these different regions is accessed. Um, starting from the stack. So data on the stack is typically accessed using push and pop or using stack pointer relative addresses or using base pointer relative addresses. Of course, um, from the stack pointer, which is on, on the left of the stack, the addresses are, uh, the offsets are positive because the stack frame goes between the stack pointer and the frame slash base pointer. From the um, stack pointer, the offsets are positive because we're going forward in memory. From the uh, base pointer, the offsets are negative because we are going backwards towards the stack pointer. All right, um, here are some examples um, that you, the same way to reference if the stack pointer is pointing to this, uh, sorry, my mouse wasn't showing, to this area right here. Um, you can access this by dereferencing RSP or dereferencing RBP minus OX28. And this is RSP plus OX8 and RBP minus OX20 and so on, right? Um, cool. That's uh, a pretty interesting multiple ways. There's actually one more way, of course, you can get the value of RSP or RBP into some other, um, uh, uh, what's it called, some other variable and then dereference that variable. This makes it a little tricky uh, because it's hard to tell from just this memory store that things are being stored onto the stack. You need to then also carefully understand uh, where our DX got set which could have been in another function altogether. So it's it, it gets pretty complicated. But typically this is how data on the stack is accessed. What about data and elf sections? Well, the interesting things, all these elf sections, BSS, RO data, and, and that data, they are stored in the L file or mapped directly uh, after the L file. Um, so they are always a known offset away from the program code and they are accessed using RIP relative addressing. Um, to load, you would, you know, do something along these lines, move into RAX from RIP plus some usually not large number because um, if we rewind and you look very closely at these addresses, basically what happens here is um, the program uh, is mapped into memory twice, once for the code and once completely separately a little bit later for all of the data segments. Um, and so the, the code and data segments are accessed from two different uh, areas. Um, uh, even though it's from the same file. Uh, so it's it's RIP plus some large uh, offset. Um, store is obviously the same. And then of course you can get a reference to it but using load effective address. And then of course this is tricky. Then later on you can dereference REX and then you have to think where is REX coming from by uh, going, um, understanding what calls that function that you're reverse engineering and so on. All right. The heap, again, we're not gonna look at the heap very much um, in this module, but we will look at the heap a lot later. And here we'll learn how to look at data that is being returned by the heap, from the heap. Um, typically you have a pointer that you retrieve via malloc, and then you um, uh, need to um, store it somewhere. Uh, 
whether that is on the stack in another global uh, variable um, or in a register. And this can get pretty tricky. I mean, if you look here, I have two examples. Example one is a stack data access, right? Where we are moving the stack pointer to RAX and then dereferencing RAX. And this accesses this data right here. The other one is an arbitrary data access by dereferencing a pointer that's stored on the stack. And all that's, a, uh, that's different are these square brackets. So here we are dereferencing the data at the stack pointer. This data, or sorry, the data stored at the top of the stack, we're dereferencing this data, moving it into RAX, and then dereferencing that, and then reading this data into RDX. Two very important different um, operations. This is something that you're more likely to see with, for example, data returned from the heap. Um, all right. Finally, a word about data structures. Um, when you're writing code, you might create structs, objects, um, complex uh, combinations of variables of different types. All of this information is lost in the compilation uh, process. You're going to have to piece that together based on how data is accessed, how it's stored, and how it's used. It's not easy. And I have not found a good way to just convey this knowledge to you. The way that you're going to do it is tackle reversing problem after reversing problem until you understand. But you'll get there. See you next video.